Hi, you all. Welcome to worship for Sunday, March the 29th, 2020. I'm Pastor Haley Hausman. I pastor um, Long Creek and Dalton City United Methodist Churches in Illinois. Thank you for joining in with us this morning. If you're a part of the congregations at Long Creek and Dalton City, I say welcome to you and it's good to see you. I wish I could see your faces this morning. If you're not a regular part of our faith community, I also say welcome and thank you for joining in with us today. Just a few announcements for um, those of us who are a part of our faith community. I'm continuing to go through the book of Mark. If you'd like to join in with me on my blog, haleyhouseman.blogspot.com. Um, today was chapter 11, so we're almost to the end, but you can join in and start at the very beginning at any time. Keep digging into God's word while we are in this time apart from one another. Also, continue being the hands and feet of Jesus to your neighbors and to one another. While we can't be physically present with each other, we are still connected through Christ as a part of the body of Christ. Now, will you please join me in our call to worship this morning? Hear these words from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. If you would like to at this time, take a pause in the video and head down to the links below or on your worship notes this morning and listen to the song, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. And feel free to sing right along with it this morning. Will you pray with me? God, we give you thanks for your presence with us as we worship you this morning. Even when we are physically distant from one another, we are still connected in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are never distant from us. Good Shepherd, thank you for always being with us no matter where we are or what we are facing. Thank you for leading, guiding, and directing us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for never leaving nor forsaking us. God, your promises are true and faithful. Help our hearts to be still this day and find our rest in you as we worship and praise you. Holy Father, we give you thanks. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16 and 105. Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the Bible. If you need something to do this week, Turn to it and read through all of it. It's beautiful. But here we go in Psalm 119, 9 through 16 and 105. How can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word? I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statues as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Your word is a lamp for my feet a light on my path, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. If you would join me in saying our statement of faith or the Apostles' Creed this morning, it's on 881 if you have a hymnal at home, or I know many of you know it by heart. There's also a link in the documents below or in your worship notes if you need the words this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I have a special field trip for the kids this morning for the children's sermon or the children's moment. It's coming up. Hey guys, it's Pastor Haley coming at you with your children's message for the week. We're on a field trip to the golf course in front of my house today. I'm in the sand pit this morning. In Matthew chapter 7, it talks about two men who built a house. One of them built their house upon the sand and the other one built their house upon the rock. Let's test this out today with my birdhouse and see how the sand works. Uh-oh, the house is not very firm and very steady at all. Perhaps we should take a, a little lesson from the guy who built his house upon the rock that makes it much more firm for us. I just want to remind you all today that Jesus is the rock that we should build our house upon. So here's my challenge for you all this week. While you're at home, build a house or two with your family. Build one maybe that won't stay up and will fall down and show me what that looks like. And build one that's firm and safe and on a good foundation, like the foundation of Jesus. You can use your Legos or bricks or other things that you have at home and make something and then send it on to me so I can see what you did this week. Let me pray with you all. God, I just give you thanks for the children in our faith community. Continue to watch over them and guide them. Help all of us, Lord, to build our house and our lives upon the firm rock that is Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much. Just keep reminding us of your love and of your presence. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Adults, I encourage you this week, too, to go out and build something and send me a picture of what you built. Make sure it's something that's built on a solid foundation. Or maybe if it's not, it shows what we shouldn't do as well. This morning, if you have any joys or concerns, please let me know. You can call me, give me a text message or a message or put something in the comments below. And I'll make sure and pray for you or for your specific thing this week as well. But if you would join in praying with me this morning... Lord, we pray for those in our faith communities of Long Creek and Dalton City. I pray, Lord, that you would watch over them and guide them, protect them in these days. I pray the same for our communities and for the communities of those who may be watching with us. We ask, Lord, that you would provide in the ways that only you can, that you would remind us of your presence and of your love and of your grace. God, I ask that you would continue to be with those within our church community and family who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Those who have died in recent days, Lord, I pray that you would provide comfort for their families and loved ones. I ask, Lord, that you would continue to provide recovery for those who have had surgery in recent days. We pray, Lord, for healing in their bodies. We pray, Lord, that you would work in the way that only you can within them. Lord, I pray for those who are expecting babies in the coming days. Lord, we ask you would just continue to watch over them. We pray for health and safety, Lord, for them and for the babies who are on the way. God, I pray for each of us that you will remind us that you are with us and that there is no need to fear. Even when the world says that there is reason to fear, Lord, you remind us to not be afraid because you are with us. Lord, I pray for those who are worried about their loved ones or their jobs, Lord, at this time. God, I just pray that you would remind them of your presence and provide in the way that only you can, Lord. Lord, I lift up our doctors and our nurses and our local hospitals and all of the hospitals around the world to you, Lord. God, be with all of those who are fighting this virus on the front lines. We pray, Lord, that you would give them wisdom and strength and protection Lord, I pray for all of those who are having to continue to work in the middle of this, Lord. We ask that you would be with them and remind them that you are with them, Lord. God, we pray for those who are already sick and suffering from this virus. We pray for healing in their bodies, Lord. We pray that you would bring strength in what is needed in this moment, God. 
Lord, I lift up those who are grieving the loss of loved ones or someone who has had to die alone in this time. Lord, I pray that you would just remind them of your presence and comfort in the way that only you can, Lord. Lord, I pray for those who are grieving the loss of things like their senior year of high school or their sports season or plans that they had that have now become disappointments. Lord, I pray that you would work all things out for your good and for your glory. Lord, I pray for those in our community who are at a higher risk or who are elderly and are concerned or their family are concerned about them at this time. Lord, we pray that you would provide for them and give protection to them, God. Lord, I lift up our loved ones who are in nursing homes and others who are in nursing homes, Lord. We pray for each resident and the staff who are caring for them at this time. Lord, I pray for the family members who so desperately want to see and hug their loved ones. God, we pray that you would make a way for them to, make, to be connected and stay connected, even when they have to be physically apart. Lord, I pray for those who are financially suffering because of the virus, because of job loss, or the fear of it, God. We pray for those who are concerned about slowdowns and shutdowns of their businesses. God, you are a great provider, and we pray, Lord, that you would provide provision. Lord, I lift up our children and our families who are at home this morning and um, just trying to get along with one another and do the, all the things of the normal day, God, along with trying to do school and other things, God. We pray, Lord, that you would help to strengthen them and find joy in this time and in this moment. God, I pray for our teachers and the school staff and the administrators who are continuing to teach and press on despite the major changes that have happened in recent weeks. God, we also want to lift up to you the other things that are also on our hearts this morning. So in this moment, Lord, we silently pray to you. And we all join in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'll encourage you, encourage you, to go down to the comments or your worship notes and listen to the songs and sing along to There's Something About That Name and His Name is Wonderful. And I'll see you back here when you're finished. Do you remember the story of the three little pigs? <laughs> Last week I talked about sheep, but the three little pigs have been on my mind this week, really. I've been kind of creative and crafty, so you'll see that come out in just a moment. Um, you might remember the Three Little Pigs story that Disney did called Silly Symphony in 1930s, the Three Little Pigs story, where the three pigs were a fifer and a fiddler and a practical pig. And I want you all sometime this week to go down and rewatch the Three Little Pigs, the Silly Symphony one. It might bring you some joy this week and this morning. It did me as I watched it this week multiple times. But you may remember that these three little pigs, their, their mama sent them off to build a house. It was time for them to grow up and move on and do something different. So she encouraged them to go out and move out on their own. And so each of the three little pigs took their money and they went off to build their own little houses. Well, the first little pig built his house out of straw, all right? So pig number one built his house out of straw, or her house out of straw. And along came the big bad wolf, and the big bad wolf huffed and he puffed, and he was able to blow the little pig's house down. You might remember the little song that goes with it, or the little words that go with this fable. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Well, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, and sure enough, 
the wolf blew down little pig number one's little house made out of straw. Well, wolf went along to the next little pig's house. This little pig didn't, um, he took a little bit more time building his house, built it out of straw. No, the first one was straw. This one was out of sticks. So pig number two, house out of sticks. A little bit sturdier than straw, but we'll see how it holds up. Along comes the wolf, knocks on the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Well, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, the wolf says. And so we have some puffs. <sighs> sure enough, he's able to blow down that house that was made out of sticks. So two pigs are now homeless. They've gone over to their third little brother's house. And the third little pig, the practical pig, knew that he needed to take some time building his home. And so he bought some good and sturdy construction materials and he made, or she made, his or her house out of bricks, yes. So along comes the wolf, knocks on the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Well, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. <sighs> oh. And the wolf cannot blow the house in. The house made of bricks is strong and sturdy and it does not go anywhere and it protects the little pigs who are inside. This story of these three little pigs reminds me of our scripture today from Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 through 29. If you listen to the children's sermon, you got a little preview of what this scripture is about. But here it is this morning in Matthew 7, 24 through 29. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man or woman who built his or her house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man or woman who built his or her house on the sand. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. The word of God for the people of God. Verse 24 says to hear these words and put them into practice. The wise man or woman built their house on the rock and the rain came, the streams rose and the wind blew and beat against it, much like the storm that we had last night here when the rains poured down. Yet when these rains came and the wind and the storm, the house did not fall. It didn't fall because it had a firm foundation upon the rock. In verse 26, we see the opposite of this story. The person who hears, who hears God's word and doesn't put it into practice is like the foolish man or the foolish woman who builds his or her house on the sand. The rains come and the streams rise and the winds blow and beat and the house falls with a great crash. It doesn't have a firm foundation to hold it into place. I think back to the little pigs. <laughs> and about how the three of them each built their house upon a different foundation or in a different way. The first two pigs had their houses of sticks and straw. They're like the foolish man or the foolish woman. They were in a hurry to get things done and didn't take the time to build a house in the proper way. And so when the wolf came along or the winds and the waves like we experience, when the, the hard times came, the houses fell down. Then again, there's the little pig who built his or her house out of the bricks. They took the time and the, the discipline to put into building a house out of bricks. Like the wise man or wise woman, they were able to stand strong when the winds came, when the streams rose, when the wolves of the world came knocking on the door the wise person was able to stand firm upon the solid foundation 
of God, of Christ, our rock and our redeemer. I think about us. <laughs> what have we built our lives upon? What are we building our lives on? I'd say now is a time when the foundations that we have built our lives upon are being tested. It can be a time when this, the sands below us seem to be shaky. If we've built things upon sand, the things of the world are crumbling, or maybe our internal workings are, are working out of fear, and we're looking for a place to land. But then again, if we built our lives upon the solid rock, the foundation of Christ Jesus, our Lord, our faith holds us steady. Even when the, the torrent comes, when the strong winds come, when the wolves of the world come, we are able to stand firm in our faith. There's that old hymn by Ed Mote who wrote, it, wrote these words in 1834. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When the storms come, his anchor holds within the veil. Christ is our anchor of hope in these times of trouble and in times of joy as well. All of the time we can lean in and depend upon him. Um, in the year 2000 or so, my youth group in Metropolis connected with a youth group in O'Fallon and we went on this mission trip, a rolled rolls mission trip. And we acted out this song called Two Sets of Joneses by Big Tent Revival. Now I'll let you figure out which character I was in this story. I'll give you bonus points if you get it right, I guess. But I encourage you to listen to the song, Two Sets of Joneses, today. I'll put a link below in the comments. And think about it, how it relates to your own life and your life story. Well, I encourage you to listen to it later on. Here are the lyrics this morning for us to hear. This year is a song about two sets of Joneses, Rothschild, Evelyn, Reuben, and Sue. And just for discussion through random selection, we've chosen two couples who haven't a clue. Well, Rothschild was lucky to marry so wealthy. Evelyn bought him a house on the beach. Reuben and Sue, they had nothing but Jesus. And at night they would pray that he would care for them each. And the rain came down and it blew the four walls down and the clouds, they rolled away. And one set of Joneses was left standing that day. Evelyn's daddy was proud of young Rothschild. He worked for late hours to be number one. Just newlyweds and their marriage got rocky. He's flying to Dallas and she's having a son. Reuben was holding a Gideon's Bible and he screamed, it's a boy, so that everyone heard. And the guys at the factory took a collection. And again, God provided for bills he incurred. And the rain came down and it blew the four walls down and the clouds, they rolled away. And one set of Joneses was left standing that day. So what is the point of this story? What am I trying to say? Well, is your life built on the rock of Christ Jesus or a sandy foundation that you've managed to lay? Well, needless to say, Evelyn left her husband and sued him for every penny he had. But I truly wish that those two would find Jesus before things get worse than they already have. And the rain came down and it blew the four walls round, and the clouds, they rolled away, and one set of Joneses was left standing that day. There's two sets of Joneses. Which ones will you be? This is a time to take a deeper look at our own lives. What have our priorities been what have they been before and what will they be going forward from here? We've been given a great opportunity from God for this reset of our lives. Have you been building your life on the solid rock of Christ Jesus or on something less? In our congregations, we've been talking about the promises of God and clinging to and hanging on to the promises of God that we find in his word and this is yet another promise from God that we find throughout scripture. 
that Christ is the solid rock that we can build our lives on. On Christ, the solid rock, we can stand. If you look it up on Bible Gateway this afternoon or somewhere else in a commentary, you'll find out that in the NIV, the word rock comes up 149 times. 149, you've got time to go look up all of those if you want during this time away from one another. But 149 times we find the word rock. Sometimes it means like a real rock and sometimes it's referring to God, our rock. Oh, well, this morning, I know some of you have been missing my quizzes about whether something is a promise from God or not a promise from God or a word in the Bible or not a word in the Bible. So I'll give you a little quiz this morning and see how you do, okay? So number one, there is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. God's word, not God's word. Yes, it is in God's word in 1 Samuel 2, 2. Good job. Second one, he is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. God's word, not God's word. Yes, it is God's word in Deuteronomy 32, 4. Third one. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God, my Savior. God's word, not God's word. Yes, it's in Psalm 18, 46. It is God's word. And number four. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord himself is the rock eternal. God's word, not God's word. Yes, it's Isaiah 26, 4. Those are at least four times where the word rock is used in the Bible over and over, and it reminds us that God is a rock. Hear these words from David in Psalm 18, 2 as well. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my strong hold. May the generations who come after us, who look back upon this time of us in the midst of this pandemic, may they look back upon our lives and say these words from Psalm 78, 35. They remembered. They remembered that God was their rock that God Most High was their Redeemer. May we remember that God is our rock, that he is our anchor of hope in times of trouble, that we can hold steady in the storm when we cling to him and build our lives upon his firm foundation. God is our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. And let's pray. Lord, you are our rock and our Redeemer. Set our hearts aright. Help us to build our lives upon the rock of Christ Jesus. Help us to hold fast to you, Lord, our anchor and our hope. Amen. If you'd like to go now and listen to the song, On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand, I encourage you to do that. And I want to leave you with this benediction today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace and his love. Amen. Thanks for joining in and we hope to see you soon.